This is the Fantasy Football Unlimited Podcast with your host, Kevin Murray. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Unlimited Podcast. On this episode, we have a guest that has been involved in the fantasy sports industry for over a decade. He's created a recognizable brand that covers a variety of different sports. From Fantasy Six Pack, it's Joe Bond. Welcome to the show, my man. Hey, what's going on, man? Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, looking forward to just chatting with you today, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to have you here. Uh, for listeners and viewers that are maybe unfamiliar with your work uh, and what Fantasy Six Pack is all about, can you share what your role is over there and, and what Fantasy Six Pack is? Yeah, so I'm uh, I'm, the, I'm the founder of Fantasy Six Pack. Um, it was actually me and my friend Garrick who started it up back in, I believe it was like 2010. I don't know. It's the sort of a thing that we did. I didn't really know what it was going to be like. Uh, we just were like, yeah, sure, let's do it. Um, but, you know, it, he's no longer doing it. Uh, you know, life got in the way and just didn't really want to keep going with it. Um, but we uh, we started it out as it was supposed to be a fantasy site for six sports. So football, baseball, basketball, hockey. I think at the beginning we did NASCAR. And I'm not going to lie. I don't even remember what the sixth sport was back then. Uh, <laughs> so maybe we were like, oh, college or something like that. We sort of like made it up, but I don't know. We made it work. But uh, yeah, that, that's still what we do. Uh, predominantly football and baseball. Uh, we still we do have our hockey and our baseball basketball content coming out um, right now. I published a couple of articles yesterday and today. Um, and then we do golf and you know, a lot of DFS stuff and betting is, is thrown into the mix now. So it's it's six sports. Kind of, but when you add in all the DFS and the betting, like it's more than that now. Nice, nice. Now, from a consumer perspective, what are your favorite features and tools and content that comes from from the brand? Yeah, so you know we we do a, we do a lot of of content. Uh, you name it, we've pretty much got it. Um, but you know, I would say that the most valuable pieces that we have are the rankings. Um, me and Keith Lott and Nick over there and. Mike Tomlin and, and Richard and, and all those guys. And we've got Connor doing ba baseball rankings with us and, and a bunch of other guys that, that do like dynasty rankings and things like that. Uh, you know, we, we do very, very well in the fantasy pros accuracy contests. Um, you know, I, I've been, you can see these trophies. That's where those are from. Um, so the three trophies back there uh, is where the fantasy, uh, the, the, is from the accuracy contest over there on fantasy pros. So that's number one, but we, you know, we also offer stuff like projections. We offer a bunch of DFS content. Um, Dave Eddy, we got Chris Robin, AKA Detroit BC, you probably know him from that. We've got Keith Fleming. We've got the, we just brought on these guys, parlay fantasy, Matt, Shane, and Jason who do a bunch of betting content. They, the, they're constantly hitting parlays and, you know, just their one-off bets. Like they are, fantastic and dave eddie has a winning percentage on in cash nfl that is just phenomenal like 75 percent. it's crazy um so you know like the the subscription pretty much pays for itself just with those guys and then you know if we can help you win your your season long leagues and it just you know bonus right um and best of all like we've got our discord right and you know it's free and open for anybody but we've got some premium channels where you can get kind of your your direct access to us and, and ask those custom league questions that, you know, might not otherwise get, get answered sometimes just because we don't have the time to, to get to everything. Sure. Sure. And podcasts as well, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they have so much again, right? Yeah. YouTube and we're on Apple and Spotify all over the place. So yeah. And you've been doing the fantasy six pack hour, right? Yes, that is, that is mine. It's the, uh, I guess you can call it the flagship show. Um, we do football and baseball with that one. So we do year round, uh, but we've got a bunch of other ones. We've got some just baseball ones and just football ones, uh, with, with all the, with all the staff that, that like to do podcasts. It's incredible. And that's incredible. And obviously for you, for, you know, cover so many sports and have yeah. this background with this sports had to have had a big impact on your childhood. Talk to me about, you know, growing up your favorite teams, favorite players and, and what sports meant to you as a kid. Yeah, so I grew up in the in the DC area, Northern Virginia, and 
first, you know, first taste of sports really was going to the, uh, you know, the Redskins back in the day, right now, the commanders, but going to RFK, watching the Redskins play back in there, you know, they were still good back then, right? You know, it wasn't, we weren't in the dog years yet with them. So going there with my parents and, and we had season tickets, that was fantastic. That's where it really all started. Just getting to be involved with all of that, seeing the crowds. Um, and then, you know, I played sports with the kid. I wasn't awesome. Uh, you know, I, actually got better as I, cause I was like a, I was like a, I was a tiny kid. Uh, I was one of the little ones. So it just wasn't great at sports, but, uh, kind of, kind of grew into that and got, got better as I got older, but kind of too late, kind of missed the boat on all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, just, just love the competition. Just love watching the game. And, and it's funny when I was a kid, I used to, uh, like I was huge in the Redskins and, and the Orioles and, 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 you know, wizards you know it was uh the the bullets back then and the, and the calves and but with the redskins i used to take the like newspaper clippings of the box scores and like make binders of everything i used to literally study the box scores as a kid i mean fantasy football was like right up my alley right like i yeah. didn't realize it like so somebody approached me you know early in college and they're like hey we want to do this fantasy football thing i'm like what are you talking about and uh, they were like, oh, yeah, it's just stats based. And I was like, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a natural fit. That's funny. I, I, you know, I did the same thing, cutting out clippings from uh, from the newspaper, right? And, yeah, putting them in binders. I did the exact same thing. It's funny how a lot of people's origin when it comes to fantasy sports, you know, when they come, you know, when they go back a few years, it is that. It's it's either like card collecting and, you know, obsessing about the, sp the sports or the stats yeah. or uh, obviously, you know, early – you know stuff like that when you're you know looking at box scores and stuff like that. I think that's fantastic. Now, now you also you're a Virginia Virginia Tech guy. Were you around at the same time as like Michael Vick? You had to have been in that. Same I was. Race, right? um, I was there for his final season, so I did oh get to gosh. experience. I didn't get to experience the national championship run, yeah. but I did get to see Michael Vick in his heyday. And oh, buddy, man, it is it is as advertised. That dude is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, no, Michael Vick is is incredible. So yes, I was I was there for that. Unreal. No, I, I remember when he was in college. I mean, it, it was just electrifying. I can't imagine being a, a student at the school at the time. That's awesome. So, so as a sports fan, what's the worst loss you ever experienced? What's the what's the favorite moment all time as a sports fan as well? <laughs> uh, worst loss, you know, there's a couple. Like I, I go back to, and I kind of got reminded of it this past week when Virginia Tech lost that you know that heartbreaking at the end with Miami there and. Uh, I didn't really think it was a catch, but it got called a catch on the field. I didn't really wow. know how it got overturned, right? Yeah. But I remember uh, there was a, a the Sugar Bowl against Michigan, and Danny Cole, uh, like dove and caught this ball in the end zone, and like knee went down. He held, he got control. All everybody's saying it's a catch. The rest, you know, incomplete pass, that kind of stuff. We go on to lose the Sugar Bowl. Second is probably, um, and it's a baseball one. Uh, ninety seven Orioles. Uh, they lost in the ALCS to the Cleveland Indians. It was a heartbreaking loss. Um, you know, it, fan kind of reached over the home run ball, wall to, to grab the ball. It was ever so slightly, but I just remember like Brady Anderson being like, "Hey, he he, the, the dude up there caught it. Like what? Like no." And like they just said home run. We lost and and didn't go on to the World Series, unfortunately. So th those hurt. Um, you know the the Redskins and the Wizards and and the Cavs uh, haven't always been the greatest so you had your share, hard, share of heartbreak <laughs> yeah hard i've just uh the caps maybe uh lately have been good but you know the i've just got used to the to the redskins and the, and the, uh, yeah. and the commanders is not being so good so well i don't i don't feel bad for that orioles lost yet you, you you talked about because they beat my mariners that in the division series that year so <laughs> you know all right so <laughs> um how about, how about your all time favorite sports moment like favorite favorite time as a sports fan um that's tough i actually like haven't really witnessed a lot of like <laughs> great moments like as you know if, with my favorite teams that kind of thing i mean the caps won the stanley cup a few years ago i'm not the biggest hockey guy i'd say honestly like you know and i keep going back to baseball but it's the orioles like when they weren't supposed to be good when buck showwater was there and they just kept winning and winning and winning like that was awesome uh we were the underdogs every single year we almost got to the world series with them we lost to the royals um but those 
those were good years, man. Like it was just, it wasn't expected. And I mean, the, we, I was around Baltimore cause my, my now wife like lived in Baltimore then. And so just like, just the energy of the city was fantastic. Yeah, there's something special about a baseball run, you know, for us, yes. for a city, for a community, and then obviously the just baseball postseason is is as dramatic as it gets. So yeah. I totally get that. And I would say that a lot of people, you know, when I've asked them about that on this show, it, it often goes to a baseball story. So you're not alone on that on that front. Yeah. So you said that you know it was college. You heard about fantasy. Talk a bit. Talk about that story again. Yeah. So uh, like I think it was my junior year uh had a friend approach me and just said hey do you want to play fantasy sports i was like what are you talking about or fantasy football and he's like you know explain it to me real quick and i was like yeah sure let's try it i mean we had no idea what we were doing to the point where we actually auto drafted the entire draft like we just (laughs) set it to auto draft it did its thing um i actually ended up getting second place in that league and was immediately hooked uh funny enough i actually lost to the guy who i started the site with um, and we like nice. were rivals for years in, in leagues. That's why I ended up asking him to play, to run, start it with me. So, oh, sure, sure. Yeah. That was my, that was my in. And then I tried basketball and I got into baseball. And yeah, I was, I was immediately hooked, man. Yeah. I would say in that time frame, it wasn't, it's, it wasn't uncommon for people to, um, do auto draft. You know, it's hard. You know, people didn't get together as much, you know, for live drafts like they maybe do now. Uh, back then, I remember always obsessing about you know setting your pre-draft mm-hmm. rankings, right? Like and seeing what your your team turned out to be, and, and kind of trying to take advantages over your your opponents by you know getting those rankings dialed in. So that was definitely a part of fantasy at one point, not drafting your team, but just auto drafting it based on your own like pre rankings. Yeah. So it was fun. It was fun to kind of figure out again like well, what happened. The, the results are in. Who's my roster, right? Mm-hmm. So do you remember like back in the day consuming content uh, or or when you did start consuming content, you know, from the outside of just your own football knowledge? Uh, do you remember whose content you, you consumed? I, I I would tend to believe that this is a pretty popular answer, but it's Matthew Barry. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> he was the first of, of all of them. But, you know, a lot of the ESPN guys, all my leagues were on ESPN outside mm-hmm. of a couple of Yahoo ones here and there. Uh, so it was all the ESPN guys, Matthew Barry, you got Eric Carabell and, and all those guys, like those were the ones that I turned to for all the advice. And, uh, you know, I didn't really know about the little, like the, I call them little sites, but you know, now they're, you know, they're kind of big, but I didn't know about like the, the fantasy alarms and the, and that kind of stuff. Like whoever existed back then, it wasn't until I got serious XM in my car and they started the fantasy sports network okay yeah there. yeah when i started listening to like uh the roto experts in the morning and you know learned to who like adam ronis and scott angle and, and all yeah. those guys were is when i was like oh there's like a whole other group of people who do this this is amazing uh and that's when it was like oh well, well okay maybe i can do this and yeah you know that that's when the idea sort of got planted in my head and i had friends kind of push me over too uh so but yeah that's those those were the main guys initially. Yeah, I think a lot of people have that same story where they, and, and that's how it's been in fantasy for most casual players. Even that's how it is today, where they just you know if they consume content, it's just basically from the host platform, whether they're playing on ESPN mm-hmm. or playing on Yahoo. I'm glad today there is more awareness of the world out there that that obviously we both discovered because it, it blew my mind. To, you know, same thing discovering there's this whole world of content creators and, and sites and resources out there in fantasy. It's part of what, you know, why I do what I do with this, with fantasy football limited. It's because there's just so much out there. I want people to discover so they can fall deeper in, in love with this, this great game of fantasy. So for you, what was it that initially hooked you? What did you love about it? Uh, Playing the game. Yeah. I mean, I, I was, I was good at it. Like, I don't like. I don't know why I was good at it, but I was good at it. And then you know, I just I, the, obviously your first leagues are with friends and stuff, right? And so just the trash talking and stuff like that, like that's fun to me. You know, if, if I'm not taking over the edge. Uh, I had a couple guys that was like, "Hey, oh, back up. Uh, that's that's a little uncalled for." But you know, as long as it's just fun 
uh, or just kind of trash talk a little bit back and forth. That that's what it's all about, you know, just getting together with them, have something to talk about, and, and then. You know, what it turned into me was I loved digging into the strategy and really learning how to get better. Um, you know, it, it kind of backfired on me a little bit because a lot of my friends don't really want to play in leagues with me <laughs> because I ended up studying it too much. And now I do this. And so they're like, they're like, yeah, we're good. Uh, <laughs> but um, it, it's just but I, I love studying it and, you know, learning all the analytics and, you know, diving into the numbers and, and the strategy behind it. And so it just morphed into just obviously an, an, an obsession to some for degree. Sure. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Now, do you have one league that you consider like your main league? Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of my original leagues fizzled out. So I would say yeah. my main league now is we started a fantasy six pack and like listeners readers league or whatever back in i want to say 2016 it's been going on for a while um and it was it was like half because i didn't have as big of a staff back then so you know it was like half staff and half just random people um and legit we've got most of the people who started in that league even the random people are still in it which is amazing um yeah. so that is considered my my primary league now and and it's one of the most competitive leagues that that i'm in now in in home leagues that you used to play in any any fun traditions that you can remember having whether it's like last place punishments or just live draft you know traditions that kind of stuff no honestly we kind of kept it simple um you know just went in and did like the you know the online live draft it wasn't a big deal to us uh we didn't get together um it just, it, yeah, it just, it is what it was. Um, For love of the game, right? Just, yeah, I mean, we just, yeah. you know, we just enjoyed playing and trash talking. And, you know, it was like 20 bucks to play. Like, that's all it was, yeah. it was to keep yeah. people a little interested. So playing in fantasy leagues, whether it's, you know, ones in the past or current ones, is there one person that you consider your biggest rival <laughs> all time? Is it is it your guy? No, actually, okay. not anymore. Not really. Okay. Um, you know, okay. he doesn't, he doesn't get to pay as much attention to it as, as he once was. So um, who is it? Yeah, who is it? So uh, kind of a 1A, 1B. So I always, like my co-host, AJ Epigarth, him and I always kind of go at it. Um, uh, I always joke that he like can't beat me. It's always funny. He might beat me in the regular season, but if we face off in the playoffs, like he's never gotten past me, which is hilarious. Um, it. So it's always like a running joke. So kind of him just because we do the show together. Yeah. But I'll be perfectly honest with you. My biggest rival um is richard seville he's been with the site for quite a while and he is a thorn in my side when it comes to fantasy um he i mean he's won our fantasy league like this f6p league multiple times i want to say at least three times um he, he's good at what he does he um he's really good at like getting those ads before anybody else is even thinking about them you're always like what are you doing and then it's like oh <laughs> you know, like he already got him like two weeks ago yeah, and, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. And always seems to turn it on, always seems to get into the playoffs. And he's, he's me to AJ, like, or, or yeah, that was yeah, right. yeah, like, yeah. So Richard's yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So totally, like, totally. I can't, I can't get past Richard half the time. Yeah. It's like every time yeah. I play him, I just lose. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And so like, I hate playing him, but it's, it's also fun. It's it is fun. Cause I mean, everybody has that, that person that, you, yes. you know, players on the waiver wire, or you want, you want them to be on the wire. You go check, you see they're gone. You know, whose roster they're on. Right. Oh, absolutely. You're yeah. like, how, how did anybody know to pick this guy up? He always yeah. so he he started this term for me and you know I think it's more of a, a tr you know a term now that people recognize but the spec ad the speculative ad yeah. and he, like he was saying that five six years ago he's like oh yeah it's a spec ad I was like I was like what the hell's a spec ad <laughs> <laughs> and he's like oh yeah I'm just gonna pick this guy up just in case and I'm like all right and then yeah I mean if it doesn't work it doesn't work and if it does no. work you you struck gold before anybody else is even thinking about him and those true. are. That that's how he was gaining an edge. Yeah, now we it, all do it. So it's, it's yeah, he's lost that little edge because we all learned. 
It is a great strategy for people listening out there. Just you know, have a, have a, a rotating roster spot where you're just taking taking flyers and, and see you know see what happens this weekend, right? To, who's an upside player you want to add to your roster? See what they do, and maybe yeah, we, you know yeah, you're we, gonna save Fab when 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 uh, it, you know when it comes to to paying up because they're already on your roster. So yeah, and we started doing huge. an article a few years ago on Fantasy Six Pack. You know, the players to stash. It goes out like Saturday, mm-hmm. and it's just that you know you're always gonna get those late those late week injuries. If you got IR yeah. slide them in the IR, you got an open spot. Why not? You know, or you've got some crummy player on the bench, toss them aside, pick up the backup running back for some team. And like, who knows if the starter goes out, you don't have to worry about it. Exactly. So. For sure. For sure. Now playing in fantasy, tons of different formats, settings. What do you got? Like what's your, what's your favorite style of fantasy when it comes to formats and settings? So I'll, I'll st- I'm, I'm guessing you want me to stick to fantasy football because I could go on for a while with this, with everything else. But so football, I, I'm more of a half PPR guy. Um, I think okay. PPR is a little too um, rewarding for yeah receivers. <laughs> like, I mean, we hear it all the time. Like this guy caught a pass for zero yards and he got a point. Like, I mean, that that's kind of bogus. I mean, he still got a half yeah. a point in my league, but you know, yeah. One point is, I mean, after a while, that starts adding up. You know, I, you see guys all the time catch eight passes for 30 yards. That's 11 points. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. So I like to have PPR. I actually think it gives a really good balance between receivers and running backs. It keeps it, you know, to where in PPR leagues, especially now, you're just seeing receivers fly off the board. Yeah. And to where in half PPR, it's a little bit more balanced. Um, you know, I, my the fancy six pack league is half PPR and we you'll see it. It's it's pretty 50 50, maybe a little little lean toward receivers now, but it's it's still pretty 50 50 when it comes to running backs and receivers in the first couple of rounds. And I kind of feel like that's what it should be. I like that for sure. For sure. Now, outside of football, I mean, obviously, that is what we're talking about. Uh, but yeah, is there any quirky setting or format in a other sport in another sport that you that you just you love to play? Yeah, so so for baseball, um, I've gotten away from the traditional five by five, which is runs, RBIs, home runs, stolen bases, average. I replace average with OBP because it lets you know guys who walk become a little more uh, relevant. Plus, batting average in the league is just awful. Um, yeah, and then for for pitchers, it's typically wins, strikeouts, uh, ERA, WHIP, and saves. Uh, I do a couple of things. I got rid of wins and replaced it with either quality starts or fan tracks, which is where we run a lot of our league now has this thing called quality appearance, which is a slight modification of quality starts, uh, like a little bit more. And then uh, I got rid of um, saves and I actually like saves plus hold. So you get those like middle reliever guys, you know, the the back end, you know, those eighth and seventh inning guys who become a little more relevant. And a lot of times they're better than the closer because their strikeout numbers are better. But like in normal leagues, they're not useful. And I I like being able to like it just incorporate more players into the pool. Yeah, I like that. No, I think it's a good message to eat too for like fantasy consumers and commissioners maybe. You know, there's ways to, to change up league settings mm-hmm. and, and, you know, advance as time time advances when it comes to analytics and different different things. So it's fun to, to play around as long as you don't, you know, try to get too cute with it. And uh, But it sounds like when you make those modifications, you know, there's a reason for it. And, yeah, uh, I, like, I mean, like, like I know a lot of people like in football and, and even like if you do, if you play in like a points league in baseball, even like they throw in these like big bonuses for, you know, like in football, right? You get like the yardage bonuses and things like that. And, and that's, yeah. that's tough. You know, like those are really hard to predict. And, you know, it's like uh, it's so random. You know, I noticed like I was in a league, a points league in baseball where, you know, a complete game was like an extra 20 points like a complete game shutout. And like, if you got one, you won the week. Like it was it's yeah. such a drastic swing. Like, yeah. and they're so random and they're so rare, especially now. Like, I don't like those like massive swing ones where, and they're so sure. random. Like if you get one, it's over. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense too. Cause yeah, bonuses, you're already getting the bonus. You're already getting the stats for that bonus Correct. game, right? Like you're already getting the, you already got the hundred yards, which is more than the, you know, the other player. Right. You don't necessarily need more. Right. So I, I like that too. It's good, good thinking. So when it comes to discovering the fantasy community, you said that like the Sirius XM is kind of what what 
tipped you off that there was another world out there? Any other thing that you can remember when it comes to just realizing there's more out there? And then what was it that inspired you to, to dive in and start creating content? Yeah, I mean, so <clears throat> I started creating content before I really learned of the Twitter and how okay. X world of, of everything. Um, but you know, what, what really ultimately got me in was, you know, I was in a bunch of leagues with my friends and I've told this story a bunch of times on other podcasts, but you know, it's kind of say it short is, you know, I was, I was always doing really well in the leagues and we were up late one night, probably drinking a bunch of beers, watching sports center or something. And somebody came on about, I think it was like a Matthew Berry thing came on and started talking about fantasy football and everybody's like, Oh, you could do that. And I was like, yeah, whatever. And then they're like, no, really you should. And so I did. I started a site. That's how it started. Um, and then just, you know, over time and I didn't, I didn't jump into it right away. I wasn't even on Twitter until like 2014. Um, so it took me a few years to jump onto the social media side of things. But, you know, once I got on there, you know, being able to connect with, with just other people was, was amazing. Um, and of course we all know what the COVID years did to it. It just completely blew up. Uh, there's so many more content creators now uh, because they were bored sitting at home and it's like, why not? Yeah. I'm just going to get behind a camera or get behind a keyboard and start typing. And, you know, I've met a lot of really cool people just from that. And then obviously going to the expo um, it's just been another uh, great experience for just learning who everybody is and, and connecting with so many people. It's true. There's a, there's a huge boom during the COVID era of content creation. Um, yes. A lot of those people like don't realize that there were people before that that era, right? And so it's, it's yeah. cool to hear you like, you know, 2010, 2012, 2014, like to go back that far. Because that goes back with, with a lot of just the big, big names in the industry, you know, can, mm -hmm. you know again when you land on twitter in 2014 that's still a long time ago it was. so you you've seen a lot uh, over the years for sure now did you ever contribute other places or was it just basically fantasy six pack from the beginning so uh, kind of uh I, I did um so i got connected randomly with um so I, there was a site I forget it was like hey i saw some advertisement it was like hey apply to be a writer um and so they wanted writers to write a blog and i got i got one of the spots and so that was one of my one place and then the guy who was running that being like their content manager uh dave ganos he started his own site with doug anderson called so called fantasy experts and it's no longer around but they wanted people to come on and he remembered me from writing for them over there at the other one and uh, brought me over. And I, I did a lot of work for them and I learned a lot under them uh, doing that. Uh, unfortunately, this way didn't last, but I took a lot of that knowledge and was able to bring it over to Fantasy Six Pack. And I think that Amazing. Really helped so, me. Yeah. So, Fantasy Six Pack over the years, hmm. obviously, it's, it's grown. How, how many contributors do you have at this, at this time? Uh, a lot. Uh, I want to say I'm close to like 45, 50 between all the different sports and, and yeah. niches between everything, dynasty and DFS and betting and all that kind of stuff. So th there's a lot. So when did you start really kind of bringing people onto the team? Uh, it was around that like 2016 time. I just started randomly getting um, people like hitting me up on Twitter. Like, hey, uh, are you interested in bringing anybody on? And, you know. I was like, sure. Uh, I never really thought about it. And and so like Richard is one of the first ones. Jonathan Chan was one of the first ones. Uh, this guy, Kevin Huo, was one of the first ones. Um, that was like the crew for a long time. And then, uh, you know, it, it get people in and out here and there. Um, and then when Keith Lott and I merged um, sites back in 20... 18 or 19, I want to say. Uh, no, maybe not that long ago. It's been, it's been a while though, but um, <clears throat> uh, you know, we really started bringing on more people than that way. Um, okay, okay. And you, you again, you mentioned earlier a little bit about the fantasy pros consensus rankings, the ECR expert consensus rankings. Uh, how much has that meant to you over the years? Some you because definitely you found some success personally with that. Yeah, I mean, ultimately that that's really what kept me in it. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Like I was sort of, you know, the site was just what it was. It wasn't really big. I, I wasn't, and I was kind of contemplating whether or not it was like worth my time anymore. I wasn't able to get as much content out as I 
you know, as a site needed to all by myself, but it was, you know, I didn't have anybody that I knew personally to help me. And so, but I liked doing rankings and I always thought it was something interesting to do. I did it myself anyway. Um, but it were always a hassle to like, keep up on the site, like kind of update, you know, try to go in through like just a, either like a bullet list or like an HTML table. Like it was always a pain to be like, Oh, I need to just like move this guy up one or I got to remove this guy. Cause he got hurt. Like it was always hard. It was time consuming to do those little micro updates. Um, and so I saw fantasy pros back then. And I was like, and I saw they had this widget and I hit them up and I was like, Hey, can I use your widget? I see other sites using it. Is there a way that I can get in and like use it to help, you know, maintain my rankings. And <clears throat> You know, the, their initial response was like, no, like, you know, you can't be a part of the ECR and this kind of stuff. And I was like, I don't, I don't care. Like, who am I? Uh, I just want to be able to use the tool to make my life a lot easier. Yeah. And uh, eventually they let me use it. And then the very next year, they let, they just put me in the, in the ECR. I didn't even ask. And they just put me in it. And I was a top five draft ranker that very next year. And I, that just started the boom. And then when I got top five within, um, it was a couple of years later, I got my first top five for the in season. Um, I was in the top 10 all year long. And of course on Twitter, every single week they put out the top 10 list. Yeah. And so it was just every week, just followers, followers, new followers, new followers. And so that just, you know, ballooned up. And then, um, the site just started growing. I started getting more people that were interested in writing for me and, and things like that. And yeah, I mean, that was the real growth there was, was through them. So, um, a lot of, a lot of, you know, I give a lot of the credit to the success of fantasy six pack to the fantasy pros, uh, accuracy contest. Nice, nice. No, no, it makes a lot of sense. I can see why that would be, um, validating, you know, to what you're yes. doing. It, <laughs> it, it obviously inspiring to kind of, you know, get get better and better at it and obviously it's 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 been good for you what's been the, the most difficult challenge you've you've faced over the years uh in this industry yeah it's um the the toughest thing really is like the plateaus like you you hit you you start growing and then it just kind of flatlines and you're like oh, what do i do next how do i how do i take the next step there's always something um the I'd say overall, the biggest one, and I've been dealing with this for the last couple of years is my site is, you know, a certain size and it's realistically not going to grow into like a behemoth, right? Uh, and not even like a, you know, not even like a fantasy alarm, you know, those types of sites. It's not, it's probably not going to get to that point where um, it's perfectly fine for me. But what happens is I get really good talent and then I can only pay them X number of dollars per article or for their content or whatever. And, but they're really good and they get noticed. And then somebody comes and like, Hey, come right for us. We can pay you, you know, triple. And it's like, I lose them like that. And I mean, yeah. I get it. I totally get it. I'm not like mad yeah. at them, um, but it's just, it sucks that it's hard for me to compete with those um, and keep the good talent around. You know, I, I, I would love to people, you know, I would love for people to stick around and like help me grow the site more. Cause I think if we all, if I could just have a, if we all like a bunch of people who are really dedicated and really love this stuff, all just come together and make one big, you know, one site, then it could be something really big, but everybody kind of wants to go off and do their own thing. And I totally get it. I was that way. I got approached a few times early on to like, piece out from fantasy six pack and go pull my rankings over to site this. And I was like, eh, I don't really care. I just yeah. was going to stay here. Um, so, but I, yeah, that, that's the biggest struggle is just keeping good people. Makes sense. Um, for sure. Now, what's been the most rewarding part of this journey for you? Uh, it's also the people weirdly enough. It's just all the different people I've met. I've met, you know, some of my, you know, better friends right now are through the fantasy community uh whether it be other other contributors or just people that i've met just through leagues or or whatever um you know it's you know because i also run one of the live scott fishbowl drafts so i've met some cool people that way um i actually shared a airbnb 
with one of the random uh, people I met at Skyfish Bowl this past year. It was like, hey, I have an open Airbnb spot. You want it? And they were like, yeah. So whatever. Uh, it worked. So it, that that's a really cool thing. And just all the different connections I've made. Like I I would have never in a million years, like when I listened to fantasy, uh, fantasy sports radio on Sirius XM, imagined that I would ever be on it. But I've been on it a few times because I've met you know, I've met like Howard Bender and, and, and Bob Harris and, and those types of guys. And, you know, I've, I've been brought on a couple of different times. So, I mean, that type of stuff is really cool. Sure. For sure. And you mentioned that the fantasy community, uh, obviously pretty spectacular. There are events. Uh, we talked, you mentioned the expo a little bit as well. Talk to me about that expo experience you've had, you know, attending the expo, meeting people in real life, you know, kind of just getting connected with, with uh, industry colleagues and, uh, and just people that love the game. Yeah. I mean, it's, if you have not been, it, it is absolutely a must, in my opinion. Um, you know, contributor or just a fan, like just just somebody who plays, come, come talk to us. We're not, we're just real people. Like I, I, I tell this to everybody I know. I'm like, we're just, we're just real people. Like I, I'm just Joe Bond. Like I, I'm not. You know, people might go, oh, but you're like top five. I'm like no, I'm still just Joe Bond. Like I'm just a dude. Come, come have a beer with me. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's, it's so cool. Um, everybody that I meet there is, is so nice. Um, I like, I, I say this, you know, as like a, an example of just we're real people, right? Is the very first expo I went to, I walked into the Kings classic draft, like the big dog one, right? Like the one with all the ESPN guys and, and all that stuff. And, and I remember like they took their little like radio break and and Bob Harris comes walk over to me and like a bunch of the other fancy six back guys and we're just standing there looking at the draft board and he was like oh what do you guys think and I was like oh yeah me pretty good blah 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 turned out I was like hey Bob I'm Joe Bond he goes I know who you are and I was like what what <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool though like just immediately yeah. just started chatting uh we you know started following us on Twitter and everything else um it's super cool and he's been on my podcast a, a few times since then so like that kind of thing like the vast majority of everybody is like that in the industry. There's a couple of like standoffish people, but that's very few. So just come and have a good time and just meet people. Talk to everybody you possibly can. Do not do not feel shy walking up to anybody. Everybody's going to be real cool and receptive to to everybody. That is, it is an amazing event for sure. Canton, Ohio, every August, Bob Lung puts puts on the, uh, <laughs> yes. an incredible event. Uh, what is your favorite? Uh, part of the weekend of the, of the expo experience like do you have a favorite event um uh you know, i kind of just i because i think maybe it's just because of the excitement of the start of the weekend the mm -hmm. the friday night party oh yeah is 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 where it's at for me you know yeah. saturday i'm kind of tied down with the king's classic now uh, i don't get to do draft night out um so i don't get to experience that i you know i'm, I'm I'm drafting for six, seven hours, you know, all yeah. morning between the two different drafts. And then the Saturday night party, it's fun, but it's not like the Friday night one. Some people are fizzled out by that point or, or like preparing for Sunday's expo. Sure. The sure. expo is is okay to me. Um, I personally don't get a ton out of it as a content creator myself, but um, I like walking around and kind of just seeing what everybody's got to do and, you yeah. know, running into the, some, some more of the fans who, who at that point you can – the fans at that point stand out a little bit more, which is nice because yeah. a lot of the content creators are behind the booths or up on stage. So the yeah. fans who are walking around, the just the the people who play are walking around, kind of looking at everything, you know, kind of like that. And so I like just approaching them and talking to them. Um, yeah. But I'd say number one is the Friday night like welcoming party, just because I get to finally see everybody that I haven't seen in a year. Yeah, in the setting, you know that park, uh, it's just it's just cool. I think I agree. Yeah. That Friday night party is pretty pretty darn special. And you said you mentioned that you you hosted the uh, SFB draft. That's incredible. I got to do that the first year it was out in Seattle. Um, the first year that we did live drafts, amazing hosting. Um, but I've also attended like Trophy Smack, uh, and that that is that is an incredible event for sure. Matt Walsh is a crazy man, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. We're He's talking so about ho about hosting uh, an SFB draft and how how special those those can be. Yeah, um, it's it's truly an honor to host the Scott Fishbowl Draft. Um, you know, it, it's they they do a great work over there with Fantasy Cares and and raising money 
and just all the work that gets put behind it. Like for those of you who draft in Scott Fishball, whether it be online or live, like the amount of legwork behind the scenes is unbelievable from all these guys and uh, yeah. the team that they have there. Uh, we couldn't do it without them for sure. Um, but just being asked to host and I do it with Jeff Lambert over going for four or going for two. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> he's going to kill me for that one. Uh, mm-hmm. he, uh, we do it together. Uh, and you know, it's, it's a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. It can be stressful at times, but once we're in the groove of the actual draft, it's, it's very, very rewarding just to see how, how enjoyable the experience is for everybody. And just, how happy everybody is just to even be there yeah and then be able to raise money for fantasy cares and seeing the donations that people put down is just it's incredible yeah it's the full package you're right from the community aspect from the you know the charitable aspect it's you know it's early july mid july i mean it's it's kicking off the fantasy season for a lot of people mentally but one of my favorite things is just is just seeing like how many people are, are, are nearby you, right? You don't mm-hmm. realize like there's a lot of people in the fantasy community that are in SFB that are not too far from you. Like, you know, if you're in, if you're going to a local SFB event, which I think is pretty cool, obviously the more people yeah. can make yeah, I've met, I've met a lot of people locally. in the industry uh, per, like that I didn't realize I lived 20 minutes away from. Exactly. Um, and then just like I said, I like Joe Shuey, who uh, is the guy who did, who came with me to, to Canton this year. Um, you know, we, we got a hot on a plane together and rode over. Yeah. Like I met the guy last year and then this year was like, Hey, you seem cool. Let's, let's go. <laughs> that and that's, and that's, yeah, that's exactly the, the kind of story that I love to hear. Cause that's, that sums it up, right? You meet yeah. somebody at a SFB event, all of a sudden you're, you're going to, going to camp together. I'm sure, I'm sure to house with him, but I hope he's a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Take your chances. <laughs> There's always risk in fantasy. Bro, football. of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, let's dive into some rapid fire questions. Let people yeah, you yeah. Know, le- learn, uh, you know, get to know you a little bit better. I'll throw out a question. Just let me know what, what comes to mind. Uh, yeah. What do you enjoy most about what you're doing in the industry right now? Uh, really, it's just helping people. That's why I got into this, man. I, I just liked being able to share my opinion. And hopefully I was right more than I was wrong. And, uh, you know, I always felt like I was. And uh, but just when you get that, like, oh man, your advice really helped me. Like it got me over this, got me, you know, got me into the championship or even if just, Hey, I won my week because of, of your advice. Like that, that feels really cool. Like I say it all the time. Now I actually care more about other people's teams than I do my own, (laughs) which is weird. Uh, I I almost don't even care about my leagues most of the time. Uh, I mean, I'm still obviously trying, but when I'm dealing with, you know, questions on discord and questions in Twitter and questions on our live show Sunday, Sunday morning and, and just all that kind of stuff and writing the content and doing the rankings. Like I put so much time into helping other people. Like I, I seem, I almost care more about that than my own teams. For sure. And that's obviously a very rewarding part of, of, you know, fantasy analysis is, is again, helping others. Yeah. Uh, can you name a person that, that you'd love to watch a game with just to see their perspective on, on uh, the game of football? Um, so any, like this would just be anybody, anybody. Yeah. Um, <laughs> funny enough. I, and it's a little bit of, uh, I think it'd be really fun too, but I think Adam rank would be really fun to watch a game with. <laughs> He's a funny dude. Um, yeah. and, you know he knows the game too. Like it's just, it's just like seeing his analysis and then just getting the comedy behind it too at the same time would be awesome. Yeah. And it's got to be a Bears game, you know, if, if, oh, if you're yeah. watching it with Adam because you gotta you gotta get the full the full Adam effect, right? Yeah. Uh, so, what are your favorite hobbies and activities outside of sports? Um, yeah, I, I work out a lot. Um, I, I go to the gym every morning, so that that's that's a big one. Uh, a lot of my hobbies are my kids' hobbies, so. <laughs> uh their their soccer games um that kind of stuff so i mean i don't have as many hobbies as i used to it used to be video games and all that stuff but i you know i don't have time for that anymore it's it's, it's sure. whatever the kids do but um you know that that's that's a very enjoyable thing being able to i and i help coach my my daughter's team and and i've helped coach my son team once or twice already but he's a little younger i'm, I'm letting him get into it a little bit more before i jump in that's awesome. into that one 
So so working out. So fantasy six pack is that is that is that about you? <laughs> that actually has nothing to do with it. It was the six sports, but uh, okay, I, okay. I, we actually do have. Um, I made socks. So I found I found these socks in the airport on the way back from uh, I forget where we were uh, from back from Florida, I think. And it was like, um, have you seen have you seen my six pack? And it was like a six pack of beer at the bottom of the socks. And so I reached out to the company who does our our. Uh, our, our swag yeah. and was like, I sent him a picture of it. And I was like, can you make these, but swap out the beer for our logo? And we all like a bunch of people wore them at the expo this, this year. And so it was, have you seen that success? So it was a little joke on it. I mean, I get the joke. Like, I know people say that all the time about it. I was like, Oh, is it because of your six pack? And I was like, no, no, definitely <laughs> not. But, uh, it's, uh, it's a little, it's a little, a little, uh, a little fun with that one. It's perfect. I mean, you have you have you have the ability to be flexible. You can be talking about a six pack of beer. You can be talking about abs. You can be talking about covering six sports. I, I like the name. The branding there was very intelligent. <laughs> uh, so, what's your all time favorite TV show? Man, um, I gotta, I gotta go Seinfeld. Man, this is a okay. classic. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you know, I, I didn't watch it like live as a kid. Like when I was, you know, but I, I started watching all like the reruns. I don't know if you remember, like coming home from school, all the reruns of the shows were on. Like, that's what yeah. I would do is, yeah. is watch those. Right. And so got into like all the Seinfeld episodes and they're just there's so many classic quotes from that. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to go away from Seinfeld. Pretty flawless. How about an all time favorite movie? I am a big Star Wars geek. Uh, so okay. it's got to be Star Wars. Uh, Empire Strikes Back is my is my favorite. I know that's kind of the typical answer, but that's that's where it is. The original good. trilogy is all it is. <laughs> I was I was hoping you were going to say 007 or something. Ah, uh, yeah. It's funny. <laughs> I was I've never been the biggest like James Bond. They're exciting, but yeah, they're yeah never yeah. really my thing. I don't know why. <laughs> is that something that you grew up with? People kind of making references your oh, whole life. I mean, they still, they do um, yeah, yeah i mean i do it myself you know i i, I throw double oh eight at, at the end of everything sometimes yeah. you know just to kind of be funny about it um and i'm like you know i'm i'm not james bond but i'm the next you know it's, <laughs> it's great it was always it was something funny i started doing as a kid and just kind of stick with it you can't shake it i, mean, I almost introduced you as bond joe bond <laughs> <laughs> so so uh um, you can stir uh, it though. I'll, Maybe not shake it, but stir it. To get, uh, there you go. There you ah, go. that was bad. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, we, we need some of that. Some, some dad jokes in here are always welcome. Uh, All time uh, favorite sports movie. There's a lot. Um, I, 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 you know, I go League of Their Own, man. Okay. Yeah, it's. I just like the comedy stuff. You know, yeah. there's there's your like more serious movies, and those are awesome. But I don't know. I, I lean toward the comedy stuff. It's fun. It's good. It's good. I have an all-time favorite uh, video game. Ooh, there's there's a lot here. So I'm a big Zelda guy, like original Zelda. Um, yes. You know, probably really close to that is like Final Fantasy VII. Um, you want to get into this like sports games. I was big into those. You're wearing the shirt, Tecmo Super Bowl. Uh, yeah. At, you know. You know, our the intro to our show is 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 a little bit of that. So, um, kind of kind of those like you know, I, I'm kind of all genres. But if you if you want to get into like the RPG stuff, it's Zelda, Final Fantasy, sports games, Tecmo, and obviously got into like the NCAA football. You know, after a while, and and uh, right. sadly they took it away, but they brought it back. I haven't di- I haven't dived in yet because I don't have a new console. You know, I don't get to play video games anymore. So, dropping six hundred bucks on a new console to play an hour every two weeks would not be worth it for me. <laughs> Probably not a good, decision, no, for sure. not a good investment. In my wife until, until, <laughs> until the kids need a system, you know, then you gotta, you, Oh, you we got to switch. For for that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, but I that, that's same, all we get. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I get you. I get you. Have an all time favorite artist or band or musician. Uh, grew up with like a lot of our, you know, hip hop rap, RB stuff, uh, was huge into boys to men. Uh, me and JB nice. Barry, uh you know yeah. kind of connected that way we were in the uh boys to men scott fishbowl nice. uh, division and uh i finally got to go to my first concert this past summer um and uh jb's like oh you gotta go like you've never been i can't believe it he's been to like four or five if not more and sent him a picture 
uh, of the show. And he was like, Oh, that's awesome. You finally got to go. <laughs> so that's like, awesome. you know, cool. Like being able to connect that way too. Um, but yeah, voice of men would be probably my number one. That's good. Yeah. I saw them at, at a casino maybe like a decade ago. So I love it. They're still so good, man. <laughs> so good. You can't, you can't beat them. You can't beat them. Uh, how about a favorite vacation you've ever been on and a bucket list travel uh, destination, someplace you want to go. So Hawaii is number one on that. Okay. I've never been to Hawaii. I want to go. I just have not been able to, to figure it out yet. Um, our, my honeymoon to St. Lucia was Ooh. amazing. You know, okay. not just because it was the honeymoon, but uh, it was stayed at like an all-inclusive resort. It was so, so nice down there. Uh, we did like a bunch of the different excursions, like the zip lining, and we took like the tours. And like we didn't do the ones that were always through the resort. We like yeah. found like the random dude walking on the beach, being like, "Hey, come!" With it. Totally risky, <laughs> but those were the best ones. It was yeah. so like off the beaten path. Like stopped by like their like grandma's house, and they made us yeah. like lunch. It was like what? This is, a, nice. this is great. Uh, they fed us like local, uh, spiced rum that we probably shouldn't have been drinking, but I had like all sorts of crazy stuff in the bottle that I've, you know, plants and leaves and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> I don't really know what I'm drinking, but you know, it was a good time. I love it. Uh, where, where'd you stay? Where'd you stay? Cause I've been to St. Louis. I stayed, um, at, uh, stayed at sandals there. I think, I think that's where we were too. Um, I don't remember exactly which one, but I know yeah. they have a multiple. But yeah. um, I, I believe that's where it was. I mean, it's it's been twelve years, so it's, yeah, I don't yes. totally remember. <laughs> Highly recommended. Highly yeah, recommended. Yeah, no, for it's sure. it's it's fantastic. Yeah. How about uh, you know, something that you're just really grateful for at this time? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just got to be grateful for just a you know health and just family in general, and um, just the opportunity to be able to to do this, um, and just do something that I enjoy, um, you know, and be able to like, you know, with the family aspect, being able to like help my, you know, do help my kids with their coaching and, and stuff like that. So it's a great, I mean, it's a great answer. That's it's the best answer right there. Now, obviously, you know, we're all grateful. It's, it's football season. It's been a crazy football season, but obviously the 2024 season is cruising along. What are your impressions uh, through week four this year? Uh, injuries, uh, galore. And like, it's not just like picky tacky injuries. It's bad injuries. Like dudes out for multiple weeks. Who's out for the season. And then we got like Christian McCaffrey, who we don't know yet. <laughs> it just, some days it's like, Oh, he's going to be trying to get better. And then it's the next day. It's like, Oh, he's actually got tendonitis in both Achilles. It's like, what? Like, can we just figure this out? Just let me know. Can I cut the guy or not? Like, I don't know what to do. Um, it's true. Yeah, the uncertainty is 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 the worst part of it all, isn't it? Because, um, you know, there's people who have Jordan Mason, right? And they're like, yeah, do, do I am I going to be able to keep him all year? Do I sell high right now? But yeah. like you it's like almost like do you take the risk to sell him high? The fact that CMC is going to come back or do you hope that um, or do you keep him hoping that like CMC never returns. Like it, it's so hard. Like, and I don't really know the right. And like, I feel bad in our Discord. A bunch of us were like, somebody was trying to trade him, and at first, one of the answers was, uh, or he was like, "Do I trade him for?" Uh, I, I forget who the 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 first receiver was. We were all like, "Eh, I don't know. That doesn't really move the needle for me." The second one was Rasheed Rice. No, we were like, "Oh, <laughs> I would I would move Mason for Rasheed Rice." Yeah, and that oh, that no. one I would do third play of the game or whatever it was goes down and you're like, this is so unlucky, but yeah. You know, and then, you know, like it's not even just fantasy football related. It's just literally the NFL. Like who would have expected the Steelers, the commanders and the Seahawks to be three and one in the first place in their division after four weeks. Yeah. Not me. I'm a commander's fan. There's no way on this earth. I would have ever thought that Jaden yeah, Daniels know. looks like an absolute stud for sure. Yeah, I'm a Seahawks fan. I'm su I'm surprised too. I'm not surprised that they're competitive and doing decent. I'm cons I'm surprised about the rest of the division. You know, picking yeah. up all those losses. It's 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 mind blowing when it comes to what's going on this season. But every season's kind of crazy. This one does seem. I think the recency bias always makes it feel like like this is a little wackier than normal. What are you looking most forward to uh, to the weekend ahead? One of the uh, you know one of the one of the storylines this week right is. Uh... Just seeing, like, we'll get a, a first taste of like Bengals and Ravens, right? 
Mm-hmm. The Ravens finally back on track. They're two and two. The Bengals finally got their first win. They're looking a little bit better, but this is always a tough game. Like the yeah. divisional game, and those matter a lot in this division because they're, they're always they're always fighting. Like the Bengals are one and three, but like I don't think they're going to stay down very long. Like they're they're always like I don't feel like any team's just going to be like a complete mess in that in that division. We thought it was going to be the Steelers, but turns out no. Um, uh, so I, I think that that's going to be a big storyline there. It's just to see how that that plays out, and can the Ravens continue just to run the ball at this incredible rate? Like. Derek Henry almost got 200 yards. Like we all thought he was kind of getting washed. Like what? <laughs> yeah. He was a no, machine. I, he is he is a freak of nature for sure. Uh looking at, forward at this stage. I mean, it's obviously nothing set in stone, but who do you see playing in the Super Bowl this year? And who's winning it? Who's winning it all? <laughs> Man. Even though the Chiefs have like dealt with all these injuries, it's really hard. To go against them they just seem to figure out ways to win even yeah. though they like seemingly have nobody i mean you just look at like last year even or two years ago right like yeah who'd they have to throw the ball to outside of kelsey nobody yeah. so it he'll figure it out right and who knows like maybe you know i, I know uh there, there's rumors that Devonte adams wants to get traded i really doubt the raiders are going to trade him to the chiefs but who knows if the chiefs Offer some crazy package that they can't turn down. How amazing would that be? Um, that would be incredible. Parallel Holmes with with Devontae Adams. That would be incredible. Um, so it's really hard for me to go away from the Chiefs in the AFC. In the NFC, I'm still going to go Lions. Um, yeah. you know, this has been my pick all along was Lions Chiefs. I still think they're the best team in, in, in the NFC. You know, the commanders are getting out to a hot start. Um, the Vikings are off to a hot start. I just don't believe it. Not fully. Um, yeah. You know, hot starts are hot starts. We see teams get, you know, go 4 0 in September and just fizzle out. You know, it happens. So um, I'm still, I'm still going to lean Chiefs Lions in this one. And yeah, the Lions looking good um, and being able to rely on that, on that run game. And then when golf goes 18 for 18, like without a perfect pass already, by the way, could anybody explain that one to me? Yeah, it makes no sense. Like what? <laughs> Okay, so so with Lions Chiefs, do the Chiefs three peat first team ever to do so, or do the Lions you win it all? I I think the Lions could take them out. I really nice. do. I yeah. really do think the Lions could do it. Uh, their their defense is good, and you know with being able to do both ball control with you know Gibbs and Montgomery, and then yeah. also be able to sling it downfield with with Amon Ra and. And, and Williams and, you know, obviously Laporta is still really good, just not getting utilized as much as we hope this year, yeah. along with every other tight end. Uh, <laughs> it's just that's that's so hard to stop. Yeah, they're built for it for sure. Now, at this stage, who do you project forward to be the MVP of fantasy at the end of the season? Can I can I say Jaden Daniels? Because he was yeah. drafted late enough. Exactly. And he is absolutely destroying it. If you got yeah. him and he was Probably like what QB 10, 11, 12, if not yeah. later drafted in your draft, you drafted an entire starting lineup, then some a lot of times. Yeah. And you got Jaden Daniels. That's that's amazing. But if you don't want to go quarterback, because quarterback's always kind of easy, you know, they're going to be the highest point scores. I think Alvin Kamara is going to be okay. one because again, he was another like later pick. Everybody was really unsure, you know. He, Obviously, you got the Taysom Hill effect, which we saw last week. Um, but he still scored 17. Uh, yeah. You know, that's standard points. He still had um, 24 PPR points. Uh, so still amazing. Uh, he's just heavily involved in that offense, pass catching and running. You know, just where you got him in drafts, it, you know, that you're just, that's huge. It's pretty good. Yeah, my home league, I, I must say, I got Jaden Daniels. I got Saquon, I got Ken Walker, I got Malik Neighbors. Any one of those guys, if, yeah, I feel like he has the chance to to carry a team to championship. So I'm feeling all right right now, but it is football. It is fantasy. You know, a I'm prepared. Change. Yeah, I'm like prepared. That. Chaos is coming for sure. Uh, I love it. So so obviously uh, tons of fun talking to you here today. Can you name a few people? You know, obviously we've talked about your journey. Can you name some of the people that have had a big impact on you during your, your time in the fantasy sports industry? Yeah, so I mean, I already mentioned two. Uh, the 
the the big one that really kind of got me focused and, and really taught me a lot of things was uh was doug uh dave ganos um if you don't know who he is uh, i think he used to do a bunch of stuff for cbs uh he wrote for roto experts he currently i think he's still doing stuff for the athletic um, but when I when I joined with him over so called fantasy experts, uh, you know he taught me a lot of things. Let me be content manager over there, and I, I learned a lot about just SEO was the big one, you know, and that kind of stuff. And and um, and and Doug Doug Anderson, they ran it together. So both of them together like really taught me a lot of things that helped me helped me boost the. Um, Helped me boost my site to where it was more visible to more people because I was able to utilize SEO a lot more. And then, you know, I, I ran into him at the expo the very first year. Uh, Jeff Ratcliffe has always been kind of a, a voice in my my ear, um, kind of the, the little guy on my shoulder, like do this, do this, right? Um, I always joke like he kind of. If you've ever met Jeff, he's a very intense guy, and not intense in a bad way. Just like he's very excited and very like when he want when he you know, is trying to like help you or teach you or, or do something like very intense, very uh, uh, energetic about it. And so I remember the first year I met him at the expo. Um, he was like, yeah, I know who you are. Blah, blah, blah. We're talking. He's like, how's your site doing? He's just asking me questions, you know, and I was completely free back then. You know, the whole site was completely free, no paywall, no nothing. Um, he was like, wait, what? You, dude, you've got trophies from fantasy pros. You need to be monetized. And I'm like, uh, okay. And it's just like constantly in my ear, like, you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. Finally did it. And, you know, it will, time will tell if it's the right decision. I think it's overall been pretty successful, but you know, there's, there's uh, a give and take with it. So, but uh, th those three are, are the big ones for me. That's awesome. No, yeah. Jeff's, Jeff's, Jeff's a great guy. And you're right. He's, he's, he's passionate about, about yeah, it. He's passionate. That's uh, another, that's for another sure for it. <laughs> he speaks with, with certainty, you know, he's, he's the fact that he can do a radio show by himself for multiple hours every single day. I've asked him, I'm like, how do you do this? He's like, I got a lot to say. I'm like, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's hilarious. It is great. That's great. Now, what advice do you have for people that, that want to start, you know, in the fantasy space? Obviously you, um, you know, you, you have a ton of people on your staff. I mean, talk to the people out there that want to get more involved in content creation uh, in, in how they, you know, how they go about it. Yeah, but, you know, a couple quick things. Number one is start small. Like, come in, take one piece of content, you know, something you 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 like to do. Be good at it. Um, see if it's actually something you really want to do. So, you know, don't come in and, and try to be like, oh, I'm going to be really excited and do this over here and this over here and this over here and this over here. You're going to get burnt out. And if it's not for you, you then leave people high and dry because they are expecting you to do stuff. So that that's that sucks on the on the other side too. Um, but just you know, stay start small. Um, see if it's something you really want to do because uh, there's a lot of time. Like it is work. It really is. It is time consuming. Um, you're going to be burnt out from work one day, or you're going to have all your your kids' extracurricular activities if you got kids, and you're still going to have to churn out an article at 10 p.m. at night. It is what it is. You know, if that's the expectation you need to have, right? I would say, and I know it sucks, don't expect big money right away. Or honestly, in a lot of cases, don't expect any money right away. Um, there's a lot of sites making absolutely nothing. And, you know, they're just doing it for the fun of it. They want to make it a big thing. They want to make money off of it. But it's actually really hard to start getting monetized and start getting advertisements and getting paid in this industry. Um, you're, you're not going to get picked up by ESPN day one. Like it's just not going to happen guys. Like I, I know it sucks. That was my dream, right? You know, back when I started like, Oh, I'm going to write ESPN is going to find me. <laughs> they didn't. Um, <laughs> so it's what it is. But uh, you know, just be realistic about it. Start small, see if it's something you like grow with it, be good at a couple of really, you know, be really good at a couple of things, get noticed, and then go from there. But also the biggest thing I would say is be consistent, right? I see too many guys, and they're also really, really good, who just aren't consistent. Um, they'll do a couple of articles, 
and then it's like a few weeks before they do something else or a couple of podcasts. And then it, the biggest thing is, and this is one thing that I always strove to do for my site and everything that I do is if there's a waiver wire article that goes out on Tuesday, it's coming out the next week on Tuesday. And then the next week on Tuesday, people expect to see stuff at a certain time every week. And if you're different with like, look, things happen, right? I get it. Like our, my podcast, you know, typically is on Thursday nights at nine o'clock, nine 30 or whatever. Um, every now and then we got to push it back to 10. Every now and then we got to push it to Friday. Every now and then we got to push it to Wednesday. Life happens, right? This isn't my full-time job. Um, so I think most people get it, but in the most part, you got to be consistent. Um, and honestly that helps you with Google finding your stuff. They know what to expect, uh, and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, those would be, those would be my words, words of advice to everybody. That's great. Yeah. Great advice for sure. Anything, uh, anything we haven't covered before you, uh, before we close things out here that you want to share? No, man, I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Just obviously, you know, hopefully come and check out fancy six pack.net. Uh, love to hear from you guys. Hit me up on Twitter. That's 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 pretty much it. There we go. And where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, at F six P underscore Joe. It's the number six. There we go. It's it's Joe Bond. It's Bond. Joe Bond, <laughs> right there. Thanks for joining me. It was a ton of fun, and obviously, I can't wait to see what's uh, next for you in twenty twenty four. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for having me. This was a good time. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Football Unlimited Podcast. Until next time. Be sure to follow and subscribe to all of FFU's social media accounts for daily content. <laughs>